It's a race uh, against time. Tonight, upgrade or else. That's the urgent warning right now from Rentschler Field managers. Parts of the 18-year-old building are beginning to show signs of age, and some are making the case now for millions of dollars in improvements. But the big question, should your tax dollars go to a stadium that not many are visiting these days? That's the question Channel 3 Chief Investigative Reporter Matthew Campbell is asking tonight. It's game night in East Hartford. The band is out and the dance team is getting the crowd ready for kickoff. Meet new people, have some food, have some good times, play some games and go in and hopefully we get a win. Yeah. But that hasn't been happening as of late with UConn. So far they're one and eight this year and haven't produced a winning season since 2010. Because the product on the field is not very good. <laughs> The team needs improvement, and so does their stadium. Rentschler was built for $92 million in 2003. I don't know how many $100 million investments you don't pay attention to. Yeah. Mike Freemuth is the executive director of the Capital Region Development Authority, which manages Rentschler. He gave us a tour of the facility and says, in order to keep Rentschler relevant and operating, two things need to be addressed, technology and sealant. After 20 years, it just starts to break apart. If the water gets in and starts freezing and thawing and moving through the superstructure, we will have concrete and steel problems we wish we hadn't seen. He shows us the consequences here in a restroom. The water is bleeding through the caulking and it just eats away at the concrete. Season ticket holders know what it's like when it rains. The floor is all wet, yeah. It does get that way. Yeah. Technology has also become an issue at Rentschler, and it's affecting the fan experience. Cell phone service and Wi-Fi is spotty when the stadium is packed. Mobile tickets are the future, but according to fans, it's hit or miss. But it's tough to scan it, especially if it's sunny and bright yeah. out during a day game. We had it on our phone. They could not scan it for the life of them. Finally, they just let us through because they couldn't get the scanner to work. We learned the building is still running on the same technology that was used when it opened. The digital age is running very fast and we need to catch it. A study will be conducted to determine what the final bill might look like. Literally, miles of caulking will be needed and that alone will be in the millions. Deep in the seven digits, probably eight digits. Every row of seats is caulked. From the patches on the roof, which translates to water damage in the ceilings of the suites, to the outdated technology in the TV booth, we got the full show and tell. And smart investments now will protect the buildings long term. We went to UConn's most recent game against Middle Tennessee State to see how many of us are going to actually benefit from these potential upgrades. So here we are on a Friday night first quarter and we have entire rows to ourselves. So as much as we love UConn, we had to ask officials, does Rentschler deserve millions in taxpayer money? So you can't measure what this building needs by what the football team's doing today. This is not about good times or bad times. This is about its time. It's also about the attendance. Without fans buying concessions and parking, Rentschler isn't turning a profit. You really have to kind of fill the lower bowl to make the building make sense to open it up. And, and the trick is getting to the second bowl when you can start making money. This is what our cameras captured on Friday. Freemuth says if Rentschler, which holds 40,000, can average 20 to 25,000 fans for each of the six home games each season, the stadium makes money. On Friday, a season low 10,698 came through the gates to watch UConn lose 44 to 13. The water doesn't care what level you're playing at. You know, if it's going to get into these steel and concrete and this place starts popping, um, it doesn't matter what's on the field. We're going to have bigger problems. Freemuth wants the state to learn the lessons from the 45-year-old XL Center where renovations weren't made early on. And now we're playing catch up and the price tag has gone up. The event load has gone down. Newer buildings outshine it, out, outperform it. Rentschler is home to annual bright spots. The excellent playing field draws the U.S. soccer teams and packs the place whenever they come. The town would like to see it continue to be viable and open as opposed to closed really can't rewrite history. Um, you know, there was a different set of circumstances going on at the time, and we have to deal with what we have here in 2021. Owners of this facility that they don't want it rotting, so they need updating money for upgrades. I understand that. But could, could tens of millions of dollars be better spent in the state? Yes, it could. From East Hartford, Matthew Campbell, Channel 3 News. Certainly an interesting debate right now, and we want to hear what do you think about this? Should the state reinvest in Rentschler?
And as you can see, those who have voted so far not in favor of putting more money into Rentschler. You can head to the Channel 3 app, though. Let us know what you think.